Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to start um, on what will be a series of tutorials focusing on the material types. I'm skipping ahead a little bit here because I had a cool setup that I wanted to use and I thought I'd make it into a tutorial. So um, if you're not familiar with the core mechanics of materials, please uh, look for other tutorials on this subject. Um, we'll be doing some more advanced based stuff and skipping over some of the basics. I'll skim over them as we go just so that you can uh, stay caught up if you're following along at home. We're going to go over the PBS Displace Metallic um, material here. This will also work for the PBS Displace Specular, as there's not much difference between the two in the area that we're covering. Um, so use Metallic or Specular depending on your use cases. The Displace um, set of materials will displace vertexes um, on a model based on a displacement map, and they can displace them up and down um, and uh, distort the, the view of the model based on that. So I'm going to sh just show you what I mean rather than talking about it some more. So I'm going to go over into smooth POV. Ignore things in the world that you see until I introduce them. There's a lot going on. Um, it will make sense as we go. So what I have here is I'm standing on a big white cube in the middle of a nighttime world. And we've got a grass um, quad below us, which is making our land. And um, I'm, I've got the material for the ground here. And you'll see it's a PBS displaced metallic. Uh, you'll see that I've got everything set up. So I've got the albedo, the emissive, the norm map, the occlusion map set up. I'm actually going to skip over those. Look out for a PBS metallic um, tutorial to explain what all those do or a general material tutorial. I haven't done one yet. If I have, I'll update the description and put one in there. Um, beneath that is the vertex displacement area. So from here to here, and that's what we're going to cover. So vertex displacement maps are um, a map which controls how much you want to displace the terrain. So up and down. And on a vertex displacement map, a white area means maximum displacement, and a black area means minimum displacement. To show you what I mean, I'm just going to start throwing in some visual examples. So I'm going to start with this um, bar image here. These are all come from Neos Essentials, by the way. If you go into uh, Neos Essentials textures and sprites, you'll see there's a noise folder which I was in, but there's also grids, that bar folder's there, there's procedural textures. Um, there's particle effects and then shapes, which has all these shapes I'm going to be using. Just play around with them. I've got some here for you to try, though. This world is going to be published, um, and it will be inside my public folder, inside the tutorials, tutorial worlds folder. And it's terrain editor right there. So uh, if I go ahead and drop this uh, vertex displacement map into vertex displacement, and then I turn around, you'll see we've suddenly got a hill. And that this hill kind of graduates. And what's happening here if I take this image and I turn to the right and I, I lay it horizontally across like this, you'll see that um, this is where the hill is. So in the middle where the, the image is whitest is where the hill is the highest. And on the outsides where it's black is where the, the terrain is the flattest. And that's how a displacement map works. I can change this out for another shape. So for example, here I can change it out for a star. And then I can fly up over to the edge of the star, and you'll see that we've got a star shape. Here's two points of the star, and that the star graduates down again. And that is due to the um, the grayer areas on the edge of the star here. Yeah. I'm going to stop um, dropping in random materials now for a moment and go over the other properties. So vertex displacement magnitude is how much this vertex displacement map should displace the vertices in this um, material. So here I've got it at negative 100. If I set this to positive 100, You'll see I now have what looks like a cool valley where, you know, it's star-shaped. Let me just, uh, again, jump off the, the cube here, and you'll see we've got a star going deep into the ground. That's magnitude for you. You can make that um, a smoother number, and you'll see that we only go down by a little bit. So that's really subtle. I can barely see it there. I'm not sure how that's going to come out on the video, but that makes it more subtle. I'm going to leave that at negative 100 because I'm interested in making hills and valleys and cliffs and stuff like that. So that is the vertex displace magnitude for you. Vertex displace bias is, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it, but like it's a value which affects how much the map affects the terrain uh, more than the magnitude. It's a... Uh, a little bit different. So if you change it to smaller numbers, you'll see things slide down and up. Uh, it doesn't make sense in this particular scenario, so I'm going to skip over it. Vertex displace map scale depends how on how many times this vertex displace map should apply to the overall terrain. So if I up this to say 10 on both axis axi axis, why can I edit this? There we go. 
you'll now see that we've got 10 stars throughout our terrain, and it looks kind of ominous, like a sort of weird sort of Grand Canyon thing going on. That's kind of cool. Uh, we can drop that back down to 1 to continue explaining that. So that's the map scale. The map offset is how much uh, offset is applied to the map. So if you want to shift around the positioning here, so I can say, hey, shift the star 10 units to the left. And 10 units that way. Due to our UVs and our other setups, that isn't actually going to do anything right now. That's again for some, for some other setups. And that's the only area I'm going to cover here today, vertex displacement. UV displace will displace the UVs of the object. Um, that can be used if we actually have UVs, because this is a square and it has no UVs. It's just a flat image that won't actually do anything. If you're interested in UV displaced maps, uh, let me know. I'll uh, do a video on that. Now onto the kind of cooler parts. Um, you can get really varied terrain here. So here I have a noise image, and I'm going to drop... I'm going to drop that in, and you'll see we've now got a really hilly landscape that looks kind of sort of, I don't know, like a mountainous area, etc. Or we can drop this image in. This is what's called a simplex texture, which uses simplex noise. And now we've got kind of sort of more smooth um, mountains going on. But that's really not us here to show you. I'm here to talk about this uh, material, but also show you how you can use it coolly. Before I start doing this, I really want to like set expectations, and that is that the vertex displacement um, operations here in the displaced material do not, and I repeat, do not cause you to be able to make terrain. Um, if I jump off this in walk mode, you'll see that I, I don't I don't collide with the terrain. And that's because this is just a material. It's not actually changing the mesh or the collision volume of the um, surrounding terrain. Having said that though, you could take your eventual displacement map here and take it to something like Blender or another 3D package and bake that into the mesh and that way you could make terrain. That isn't um, an option for you today inside Neos, but you could export your vertex displacement map and, and take it to Blender. In the future there may be terrain editing and when that happens I'll update this with another video, but for now just know that you're just visualizing terrain. And that's why the box is up here, so you can visualize the terrain, take a look at it, and uh, you know, see what you want to do with it. Like this is quite cool. Like I would take this to Blender and bake it into a into a mesh and then maybe mess around with the um the tops of these hills, making them whiter or something so it looks like there's snow on top of these mountains. But uh I would have to do most of that outside of Neos. Again, though, that's not where I'm really here to talk about. I'm here to show you how uh, cool uh, Neotoshop is. So Neotoshop is a tool made by the Polylogix group. Um, in this particular case, I think Coffee works mostly on this one, but uh, thanks to everyone on the team for that. I'm going to go down to the bottom here, and I'm going to set my background tint to black, which is going to set the whole background of Neotoshop to black. When you spawn into this world from my um, public folder, this will already be set up. I'm just showing you what to do here, just in case you're interested. I've got down here the resolution set to 2048 by 2048, which is also the size of my um, albedo texture, etc. up there. And so now what I can do is I can draw, and I'm going to use the, the tools here. I can draw using, say, this pen. I'm going to go ahead and try and make this white, which I was having some difficulty with last time. There we go. I can draw with white. I can draw onto the terrain here. And then this is beginning to look like a vertex displacement map. But I need to access that and put it into the vertex displacement map on the material. Now to do that, it's a bit involved, but you can inspect Neotoshop. You can go to the top. And you're looking for the camera. And from the camera, you can grab Render Texture Provider and click in the world. You don't need this box, you can get rid of it. But now what you've got is basically the camera output of Neotoshop, because that's how Neotoshop works. It uses a camera. And I can drop that into... Why can't I drop that in? I should be able to drop that in. Render Texture Provider... What am I doing wrong here? Should go in there. There we go. Not quite sure what I was doing wrong there, but uh, it, like I said, will be set up for when you get in there. Let me just make sure I haven't made a mess. I have. Let me tidy that up. And so now you can see the exact path which I've drawn, oh, you can close the inspector now, on the Photoshop is now in our terrain. You'll see it's very high right now, and that's because I started with a white pen. But uh, what I can actually do instead is go back to my pen here, and I can equip it, and I can find, say, 
like a gray in the middle. And I can put that into my uh, box here. And you see it's not black, but it's not white either. And I can say, hey, over here, let's have a, you know, a nice patch here. It's this color. I can also make the brush bigger and smaller using the wheel. I'll uh, link an overview on the brush system, which I have somewhere. You can see how I'm painting over some of the terrain that we just saw. There we go. And now you should see what we've got here is that exact shape again in our terrain. So this is a really quick way to sort of visualize and play around with terrain. Provided you're in fly mode, you can explore this as though it was actual terrain. So as an example here, I can coolly, oh dear, let me swap to third person and second person, uh, smooth POV again to get rid of the head. I can go between these gaps here and, you know, think about gameplay. Like if you're making a, you know, an adventure map, like, you know, what's in this hole here? Is this where they have to explore? Is there an objective down here, etc.? You can do all sorts of things like that. I'm going to fly back up to, where is my editor? There it is. And this can keep going, uh, you know, so I can just draw around more. I can change my colors and be like, okay, I want a slightly higher part, which will be this gray here. I want a slightly higher part in the middle here. You can draw that around. I encourage you to use layers, which is one of the new Photoshop features here. If you want to play around your terrain here, you can add a layer. And then I can select that new layer and draw on that one, and that should make it easier to... There we go, that's much better. So I can draw over that area, and then we've got a, a higher area in the middle. And you'll see that's that area there that I'm pointing at with my uh, lasers. And then I can go back to white, and I can say, okay, maybe on another layer, which I'll select. Uh... that, uh, you know, maybe there's the, the top of the mountain here. And again, here you'll see there's some stuff there. So I've now made a, the top of the mountain. So there you go. That is the uh, PBS, the Space Metallic, and also an application of it, which I think is quite cool. I'm going to leave that pen there so it doesn't get lost. Um, when you're done, you can actually go to the, uh, where am I, at the top here. You can hit this export button. And what that will do is it will export your new displacement map as an actual picture. And then you could export this into Blender or something else and bake that terrain into an actual mesh. And then um, the collision volume would work and you'll be able to walk on it once it's an actual mesh. So I've gone quickly here from drawing around to a unique landscape that's full of scribbles, I know, but if you spent more time on it, you'll be able to kind of quickly sketch out some ideas, maybe take this to Photoshop and, and, and try again soon uh, to tidy it up, etc., make a more um, smoother gradients between these gray areas so that there isn't so much bumpiness. Uh, and, uh, you know, just explore what you can do with terrain. I'm going to clear this out um, off camera so that it's back to a black screen, but you can, like I said, find this in my tutorial worlds folder where you can play around with this PBS displays metallic and uh, have some fun. Hope that helps. I hope you liked this video. It's a bit different. We kind of did a tutorial and a showcase, but uh, I will see you next time.